Ooh, I'm so happy I wasn't a nigga. Ooh, I am so happy I wasn't no nigga just randomly squeezing bitches on the asses. But I ain't gonna lie, as a lesbian, there's some bitches out there that might want to press charges on me for randomly squeezing ass. I don't hear nobody out there. cipher as a girl is a whole other experience you're not just there to battle the dudes it's like you're carrying your entire gender on your back when you show up typically everyone stands around in a circle sometimes you're there to diss everybody while other times you're there to just impress everybody for me i always showed up to accomplish both so that was the setup, a bunch of dudes standing around in a circle talking shit to each other, plus me. And sure, I was cute, still a tomboy, even though I liked looking pretty, but I was a menace. And the last thing I wanted was to show up to a battle, pretty face and boobs first. I had to make sure my rhymes were sharp, but also men are basic and it's easy to insult them. Okay, so let me tell you what EVE says. She said she was never a freestyler, never. That was a skill that she was never able to conquer. What she would do is just always have the framework to talk about Little Pickles and their weak rap. It like, it just could suit everyone that she was battling against. Part of the reason why I love battle rap, especially Queen of the Ring, because you have to be such an intellectual to be able to uh, do the twists and turns the way that a battle rapper does. Like, you have to be smart to catch some of those punches, if you understand what I'm saying with battle rap. Because basically, battle rap is not... Um, pulling out guns it's about you're battling with your wit okay and each punchline is like a punch okay because they be talking about pulling out guns and blazing and AKs and stuff like that but they're not really talking about killing you they're talking about killing you metaphorically with their words okay but some people take that shit too far, y'all. I linked up with another girl and we were trying to work on some music things for a while. But I think deep down I knew that I wanted to stand on my own. I also hated waiting for anyone else to get off the ground. I can be impatient that way because once I really knew this was my dream, it was like now or never. And I just had to hurry it along. I started hanging around a local studio in Center City where I met this kid named Scott Storch. He was a skinny kid playing the piano in oversized clothes. So basically, he's always looked the exact same way. Scott was only a few years older than me, but he was already producing for The Roots. Everybody knew who Scott was, and everybody knew who The Roots were. I was a huge Roots fan, especially Black Thought. To me, he was the archetype of an MC and felt like the pride of our city. Going to Roots concerts when I was like 14 years old, completely in awe of Black Thought. I loved MC Light, MC Bull Dagger in Waiting, and Queen Latifah, Open Bull Dagger to Be. So, Paul, since we're talking about the roots right quick, let's talk about uh, all the acts that encompasses sound. You got that Erica Badu. You got that Jilly from Philly. You got the Hostess Fruit Pie, Jaguar Wright. And I know you're like, nay, she ain't crazy. Let me tell you something. That lady does a whole lot of speculating. I'm not saying that what she's saying is not true. I'm just saying she might get tidbits from people here, people there, put it together and speculate. I believe that there are truths, but I also believe that she comes up with her own 
conspiracy theories the same way I do when I read these books. Sometimes I hit, sometimes I miss. But I'm telling you, she is not some kind of oracle. And I don't uh, hate on a lady because she is absolutely the voice, not the voice voice, not the Whitney Houston voice. But don't forget, she is make the song cry with Jay-Z. Don't forget that's who she is. And she's still going around saying that Jay-Z stabbed her in the throat or something. Okay, let's not forget that. Let's also not forget that Jaguar Wright is the lady that was in the Coca-Cola commercial with the Roots. She, and then remember when she said that Carmen tried to make her suck on his pickle? Carmen? Honey, Carmen, 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 girl. In the early 90s, Philadelphia was like the cool cousin of New York. Will Smith had already put West Philadelphia on the map with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So we had that to hold on to along with the roots. You know what's funny? I don't know why. If I'm not singing that song from West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. I be forgetting that Will Smith is from Philadelphia. Will Smith had already put West Philadelphia on the map with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So we had that to hold on to along with the Roots who back then had their first album out and were throwing those big house parties where all of the local talent came to perform. Anytime I saw Black Thought, I'd act like a total goofball. Most of the girls did. He didn't pay any of us any mind. Girl, girl, pause, pause in the drawers. I know Black Thought is so happy, 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 happy that he ain't paid none of you young bitches any mind. Because you see what's happening with Diddy. You ninjas thought that that rape culture that was going on back then was just going to be swept up underneath the rug until it some somebody said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up underneath that rug because all these ninjas did made me sick. And I'm going to drag you bitches out by your toenails and expose all of you. Ooh, I'm so happy I wasn't a nigga. Ooh, I am so happy I wasn't no nigga. Just randomly squeezing bitches on the asses. But I ain't going to lie. As a damn lesbian, there's some bitches out there that might want to press charges on me for randomly squeezing Ass. He didn't pay any of us any mind. He was focused on blowing up. I totally knew the feeling. Seeing the roots did it though. That was all the inspiration I needed because when your neighbors are out there making it happen, that means you have a shot. While I was hanging out in the studio watching other artists record at their sessions, it only added to the motivation for me. When you see the music being made, you're aware that it's actually happening. There was this older kid named Marv who lived around the corner from my high school who I regard as my first producer because he was the one I was really actively working with 24 7 back then i would show up to school in the morning and maybe go to first and second period and then i would kind of declare the school day done and cut the rest of my classes <laughs> didn't i tell you school was in the way school was in the goddamn way i had shits to do like hang out with the rest of the dummies Shit, I would give them to lunchtime and it was over trash. Uh, she said once she got out of school, she'd be over there with Marv smoking weed and writing rhymes. Even though Marv made beats too, my favorite thing to do was listen to some of my favorite instrumentals, smoke weed and write some verses over them. Whether it was a Mob Deep or a Little Kim beat, I loved writing my versions of the songs. I also started selling weed to finance this mission of mine, along with working at Gilly Jeans on South Street. I had to stack as much money as I could. 
That independent artist life is pretty broke when you're not being paid to do it yet. It's even worse as a teenager since you're literally starting from nothing. And I'm not just talking about being able to afford to look nice. I'm talking about wanting to have money for anything at all, like getting from one place to the next. You couldn't walk everywhere, even if you tried, and only a few people had cars. There were a lot of obstacles, the kind that feel enormous when you're that young. I was no stranger to local talent shows by then, but that was just a place to practice in between open mics and other stuff out in Philly. I really started going in to the point where I knew it wasn't just me thinking I could do it. Complete strangers started believing in me. I felt like if I was racking up all of these successful shows and people were loving me and I was killing it in the ciphers and getting all of these great responses, then that must mean something. To me, though, it just felt like it wasn't happening fast enough. So I kept trying to hurry it along. I was looking for a manager to help me level up more quickly. It all just felt like suspended animation. Here I was at like 15 years old, already annoyed that I wasn't a rap superstar. A year prior, I sat my mother down on my bed and let her know that her daughter was going to be a full-time rapper and that I wasn't going to college. Even though she was strict with me, she let me express myself to the fullest, whether it was getting my nose pierced at 12 or later cutting off all my hair and bleaching it. My mom always let me be me. So why would this situation be an exception? Determination was in my genes after all. And watching other people make it meant that I had to. I had no choice in my mind. It was a lot of pressure to put on myself, but that was only the start. I also told myself that if I didn't make it in a year, meaning when I was 17, then I was done and I would quit. I had a backup plan to attend New York University and major in special effects makeup. So basically, I threatened myself with going to I'm college. standing topless in front of some middle-aged man smiling with his legs spread like he's ready for me to hop on and start grinding on him. I'm already over it. But I sit down and swing my legs around reluctantly. He whispers some dumb shiz into my ear about what he'd love to do to me. His voice all hot and breathy. I roll my eyes and crack a tiny smile. I whisper back with a proposition, but not the one he's expecting. Let me rap for you, I say to him. And if you don't like it, then you get a free lap dance. He accepts. Who wouldn't? You can't beat that, right? As far as I was concerned, any one of these men at the strip club were a part of my audience. And one way or another, I was going to be heard and paid. Now, wait a minute now. I'm sorry. You can't tell me that you was there and every dude lap you sat on was a good, wholesome dude that was like, oh, baby, yeah, let me hear you rap. Me? You know. And I ain't even no ninja. I'd be like, I don't want to hear you rap. Girl, I'm here for a lap dance, not a fucking rap. I'm here to get the, 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 I, give me, give me a rap dance. How about you do that? How about you give me a lap dance while you rap? We can do that. Let's compromise. You're not about to jug me and be like, okay, rap for me. And then if I like it, which, you know, I told you, it might be some girl out there, straight woman, heterosexual woman that would love to press charges against me for, you know, trying to push up on them, you know, in my heyday. But, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to accept that. You know, I'd be like, even if it is good, girl, that ain't no good. Come over here and give me my lap dance. A few moments later, I hop off that potential hell ride triumphantly, knowing that I just rapped for this man with my boobs out. And he's still tipping me when I didn't even give him a lap dance. He could have had his night made if he didn't like my bars, but he did. They all did. 
They always do. Tonight I'm destiny. Last week I was raving. You can't keep changing your name, my boss. At the golden lady yelled at me. I was getting on his last nerves. Your clients need to recognize you by just one name so they can ask for you when they come in. I didn't listen to his ass. I'd be desire next week. Midnight Fantasy Felicia Frankfurt. I don't care. One name would make me an employee, which would make this a career. And it wasn't. I was just acting in a temporary role. The dancing industry is pretty sobering. I'm no expert at all since my dancing days began and ended within the span of two months. But everything I experienced made me feel guilty and depressed. I knew I didn't have to be there, and I'm not saying that dismissively. Some girls were there to feed their families. They had kids to take care of and a roof over their head to pay for. I had a mom and a stepdad who weren't pressuring me to do anything but maybe further my education after graduating high school. I was 17, and I could be home with a normal-ass job. But in my mind, things at home with my family weren't really going that well. My brother Farad was growing up, so he was no longer just a little boy, but becoming a whole little human. To me, the house was getting too crowded. Add to that, I was getting along with my stepdad less and less. So to rid myself of the emotional, physical clutter, I needed to break out. I found myself dancing in the Bronx. Tune in tomorrow for the next part. Make sure you do. What is this? What version is? Tune in tomorrow for part four. Oh, 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 oh,